when I look back on it now, I had an absolutely magical childhood, I think. I grew up in inner city Melbourne. At 13, so I moved high school from a very migrant area to, at that time, quite Anglo-Celtic. And it was also around the time that I was becoming aware that, you know, that I was uh, homosexual, though I definitely wouldn't have articulated as such at 13. And so that kind of sense of where do I belong and how do I make sense of these conflicting identities to do with being a migrant child, um, being a gay man or a gay youth. Um, they fed into my writing and the, the way that it happened was through, um, through, through falling in love with books. It was books and it was cinema that gave me a way of understanding who I was and how I was in the world. Adolescence was really difficult. Adolescence was a real struggle, and adolescence was a, a you know where I, I, I realised I had this huge rage, rage about the world, rage about my own body, rage that I felt like I had been given this bad, dealt a bad hand, you know, in terms of trying to reconcile sexuality and masculinity. Where I was really fortunate is that I discovered literature and I discovered art, and then this yearning and that's what it felt like just this need to write and I think it's in my work that I was able to to put that rage. Years ago a friend of mine uh, sent me a, um, a book to read by the American writer Tobias Wolfe. I, I always talk about this because it was like a turning point for me and he, he wrote a, a memoir called In Pharaoh's Army and he says in that book you know when I started writing learning to write saved my life and as soon as I read that that you know, that made complete sense to me. I think there's that really incredibly formative time when you're um, in adolescence to young adulthood and the books you read and the films you see and the artworks you see, they, they just stay with you. They become the, 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 the seeds of really your own work. So many of the writers that I loved, like Norman Mailer or Philip Groth, they themselves were children or grandchildren of immigrants and I think they captured part of an experience I was hungry to read about. I was also really lucky. I had a, a very wonderful English teacher, an English literature teacher in high school, and I, I really think those teachers make a difference. His name was Mr. Javier. He grasped that, you know, he had, that, that I loved books, and he, he introduced me to European literature. I'm very, very grateful for, to, to him for, for that introduction to that world. There's that, that very, very pivotal adolescent, young adult experience of, of, of the world, and that's always going to be part of my writing, you know, the, the, uh, of what my influences are. I think the other thing, and it's not only an Australian experience, I've talked to people who are the children of migrants across the globe, and there's this certain sense that you have of a responsibility, because you know where your folks came from, and largely the, the, the migrants come, I mean, they, they make that huge journey. They put themselves in a situation of exile in a place where they don't know the language, they don't know anyone, they've separated from family and, um, and nation. All that experience, the fact that they dedicated themselves to their children, that their children would have an education, would have a life that was not possible for them, there's a certain responsibility that you feel. When I was younger, that responsibility felt like an absolute burden because I thought I would never be able to live a life that would honour that experience and there was that part of you know to become a, my own person to become uh, to to choose a life that I wanted to commit to felt like I was betraying their dreams but the older I get and I think my that trajectory is there in, in, in my writing I feel less that it's a burden and more that it's a gift I, I think kind of having that realisation of responsibility is, is quite important.